Hey everyone, I'm Josh. This is Josh at Night, and tonight we have guest Chris Sapp. He's a musician and artist. We get a chance to talk about Chris's career, his favorite rappers, and he even gives me a couple of pointers for my own rap game. Enjoy the show. Hip hop hooray! Ho, hey, ho. Welcome to the Josh at Night Show. Welcome. Thanks for coming to watch me talk to some pretty dope people. Dope people. Grab a seat and some snacks. Put up your feet and relax, cause relax. there's nowhere else to go. Hi, my name is Josh, and this is my show. My Don't even Josh. think about touching that remote. Hi, my name is Josh, now you got your snacks, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Enjoy it. Uh, excited to have you on the show, Chris. Oh yeah, bro, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Why don't we get right into it? How did you get your start? You kind of alluded to it. You started on SoundCloud. You grew from there. What did that look like? So I started, I started in early high school. I was just recording songs, you know, didn't really tell anyone, you know, rapping with the homies. Yeah, yeah. And then just kind of went from there. I dropped the song, actually, actually blew up. I had um, a bigger artist reach out to me, Just Juice. Uh huh. He was he was big in the, like the Vine days on World Star Hip Hop, all that. Actually, went on tour with him, dropped an album in high school, and then kind of stopped doing music. Kind of stopped doing music for a little bit, just you know, just personal personal stuff. And now I'm getting back into it, trying to trying to really take off in the industry. For sure, man. I, I respect that. So, what what would you say inspired you? Uh, to get into music and rap. So I used to, I actually just used to like freestyle with the boys. Uh -huh. And I used to be like big in the, in the underground scene, like listen to a lot of like coming up artists and just like, it really started with just like bars, you know? I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of that. Like you heard of like high res, like way back in the day. No, man, this is all, no. uh, I think when I was listening like to future underground rap, rap High res, the whole like team backpack thing too. Like that's okay. what really got me into it. Just like hearing, hearing like these freestyles and stuff. And so that's how I started. And then it went, it went more into writing music as like okay. I got older. Okay. So teen backpack bars, kind of the underground yeah. freestyle rap scene. Uh, you know, I will say back when I was in college, man, we used to joke around and, and do the freestyle Fridays before yeah. uh, game days. Uh, it worked out because freestyle, you know, Fridays, you know, college games are on Saturdays for those who aren't familiar with college football. So we'd have a walkthrough Friday where we kind of just not dick around, but before practice, before the walkthrough, we kind of, uh, you know, joke around with the homies. We'd freestyle and I was terrible, but I like I watched one freestyle documentary on Hulu back in the day or Netflix. Yeah. And I thought I was a freestyle rapper. Turns out it's a lot more difficult than it seems. OK, so you talked about some of your inspiration getting into your career. Who are your top five rappers? Top five. And, and why? And you can qualify it, right? Is it top five rappers now, top five rappers dead or alive? I'll let you have that that leeway. Honestly, like as of lately, I'd say like MGK, um, I'd say Roddy Rich, Juice World. I was fucking with Lil Peep when he when he came up. Rest in peace. Rest in peace to Juice World too. I've always loved J Cole. Off the top of my head, it's it's tough right now. Right, I mean, that's, about, that's about five. Obviously. And then who'd you say last? Eminem. Eminem. Okay, so we got yeah. Eminem, J. Cole, Lil Peep, Juice World, Roddy Rich. You said M J M G K, excuse me. M G K. M G K just he like I used to listen to him back when he was just like you know, like spitting bars, but honestly his most recent album, Tickets to My Downfall, actually I really enjoyed it. Even though okay. it's a whole like different like pop I'm gonna of sound old as hell, pop, man. M G K is Machine Gun Kelly. Yes, sir. Okay. Because he had a big feud with Eminem. Mm -hmm. That was like a big yeah. deal when they were going back and forth with the diss tracks. Um, that was pretty exciting. Yes, Have you ever had any beef with anyone? Nah. Do you go back and forth in, in kind of the diss tracks yet? Nah. No, no beef. You keep it cool, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I respect that. Uh, you know, something that we talked about earlier this week on our pre-interview call was about the grind right? You're, you're making this kind of a lifestyle, you're building a livelihood, but it's not something that supports you full time. And what is your what do your day jobs look like? I know you mentioned the moving company. Exactly. Yeah. I've actually been through a lot of jobs. But as of as of lately, my my boy who's actually I'm partnered with with this music stuff, he owns a clothing company. Uh -huh. So he actually has a moving company that, you know, I'll work for during the day too. And just uh, keep money coming in. Do you have any uh, stories 
of you know hopping from the couch or to the from the moving site to the studio uh, not particularly like that but you know like i i treat the music like it's a full-time job uh -huh. and then so always going to the studio always linking with djs producers all that you know but then of course like you need money coming in so sure. every like, two three times a week guy pays me well i'll i'll do a job for him you uh -huh. know and just just to keep a check coming in because you know i only dropped one song pay spotify all these all these platforms don't even pay out for like a good two months and it hasn't even been two months since i dropped yeah was it february yeah it was it was february 20th i want to say okay so i'm curious about this you also mentioned that you went on tour with juice world i'm no, sure you might have a, a fun story or two uh being on stage with those guys uh, not Juice World, just Juice. Oh, just, I'm so sorry, man. No, you're uh, good. Just, Juice World. Listen, I'm, I'm showing my age right now. You know, I see these juices, and there's babies, there's yeah. little baby, there's dub baby. I apologize. So, uh, just over. Juice. So, Juice, actually, Juice World wasn't even wasn't even up yet when, what back when I went on tour, I went on tour in 2018. Juice World probably popped off 20 late 2019. Okay. Or early 2019. I don't. Actually, I went on tour 2017. I'm tripping. Okay. But that was fucking crazy, actually. So, yeah, being in high school and all that, and then just having these guys be like, yo, we want to bring you on tour with us. That was wild. I actually did my first show with them in well, Boston. What was, what was crazy about it, man? It was just, I was, I was 17 years old. It was a whole, like, it was a whole new experience for me, you know, just traveling with these guys, barely even knew them. Like, I just, I was having the time of my life, you know what I mean? Especially, no, like, what what does that mean the time of your life i'm I'm trying to i'm trying to be specific here man paint paint a picture for us i think uh cause I'm, I'm intrigued i would think that it would be like obviously tons of fun tons of uh, crazy experience on, as a 17 year old going on stage and in, in like in different um in different states you know sold out shows just like having people like in the audience screaming just like going crazy you know just being a young and getting just getting like hella recognition you know, late ass nights. I'm going to, I was going to bars that like you can't get into, but you know, I was going in VIP section, shit like that. It was living the it life, was man, at 17. Yeah. What's your, what's your most memorable moment from that tour with Just Juice? My most memorable moment, honestly, probably in Colorado after the show, just like going, going to the bar and like it was, it was just, it was different, man. I, I don't know. Were, were you in Denver? Yeah, I was in Denver, Colorado. Okay, so you're in Denver. You're at the bar. What's going down? You guys just getting drinks, and I'm sure there's women yeah, coming up and drinks, smoking girls, and everything. Girls smoking, you know. Um, we went to dispensaries in Denver, and I was like, I I wasn't let in, obviously, but we, yeah, got, yeah. we got these edible cookies, right? Uh -huh. And I was, I was a big smoker back then, too. But, like, these little edible cookies literally taste like like grandma's, like grandma's cookies. I ate about five of them, 50 million. Oh no. Dude, I was, I was baked <laughs> off my ass. I remember. You ate five of them? Yeah, five, I didn't know they were 50 milligrams each. Yeah, I, was that's baked, a I was baked off my ass. I remember going to, um, going to get some Mexican food. And then next thing I know, I'm just sitting there and I'm just so cooked. And my, <laughs> my boy takes me back to the hotel we're watching some, we're watching some South Park. I just remember like tripping out and then waking up almost, almost missing the flight the next morning. That's, that's, all, that's about all you can do is sit there and just sleep it off. Man. I know. I was, fall asleep. I was still baked off my ass when I woke up in the morning too. I'm sure, man. That's the thing. When you go to a place like Colorado, shout out to the legislation just being passed in New York. It's now legal. Yeah. When you go to a place in Colorado, it's a different game, right? Because the potency, there's a science behind it. It's legalized, so they can be out in the open with the development of the yeah. new strains and especially, things. And it's, especially it's, back uh, in 2017. Yeah, it's another yeah. level. And yeah. um, well, it wasn't legal anywhere else. Yeah, so that's, um, that's, that's funny, man. So we talked about uh, kind of what's the, what's the grind like. You know, what was it like for you, the journey uh, from, from SoundCloud? So you started in SoundCloud dropping yeah. your stuff uh actually before that just messing around with your friends uh freestyling uh decided to put some stuff up on soundcloud how did you grow and jump from soundcloud to spotify for example 
So Spotify is actually, when I, back in 2017, I linked with um, Gambino's manager and he really showed me a lot of the ropes, like getting on, getting on Spotify, Apple, all that shit. It's just like music now that I, that I know more, it's more of like a business, you know? For sure. It's like you can throw it on, you can throw it on SoundCloud, but it's all about getting, getting the right exposure for it. And so yeah. that's, that's just a game. That's just a game we're playing right now. You know, put it on all the platforms mm -hmm. and just marketing it right. All that. What, is, what does the marketing look like? Marketing. So we just, me and my team sat down, figured out a marketing plan for empty. We're doing, we're doing pretty good. It's good, buddy. We're, do, we're doing pretty good again. So we, we did, you know, TikTok, influencer marketing. Okay. Instagram. It's like uh micro this guy from Sony Music was was like really really teaching us a lot about it. It's called like um micro influencer marketing. Okay, so that's what uh, it's called. Influencers with like smaller accounts. Yeah, smaller accounts reach out to like hundreds, hundreds of them okay. and get them hopefully for free or if we do pay, we pay and just like, you know, get it get it really going around. We yeah, did like a all... grassroots approach. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So what, what's your uh, what's your audience like? Who's your who do you make your music for beyond yourself? If that's an option. So I make obviously for myself, I make it I make it for honestly anybody that that like it taps into and anybody that it, I make I make music because I love making music and I just love putting how I feel into a song. Uh huh. And anybody that can that can feel my message and that I and that like it reaches to is who I make it for. OK, no, that makes sense, man. I, I think I, that's been a trend of creatives of all types, right? Whether it's visual artists, musical artists, the, the idea is that uh, whatever you create is a form of expression um, and it's, it's kind of a, an outlet of sorts. So let's let's talk about uh, empty. Um, yeah. You know, when you're writing empty, what can people expect when they listen to it? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? So it's heartbreak vibes. And that's, okay. that's basically what my whole album is going to be like getting out of the, the long relationship I did. Mm -hmm. It's about heartbroken, getting past that, getting over it, but still, you know, the feelings you have, like any, anybody can relate to that really. For sure. Yeah, man. I was, I listened to it, right. I was getting some post Malone vibes, man, where it's kind of like soulful rap singing, um, yeah. You know, do you have like a Post Malone? How would you define your aesthetic or like your your voice or your cadence? I definitely fit. I definitely fit into like the, um, the pop hip hop kind of vibe, but it's more on the darker side and more okay. like underground tones. It's just like, yeah, Post, Juice World. even I got songs that like have like an Ian Dior kind of vibe. OK, it's like this newer this newer generation vibe. OK, newer generation. Yeah, man, th there's a lot that's changed and i'm i'm uh the oldest rapper you mentioned was eminem who was yeah. big 90s thousands so um, i actually used to listen to a lot of a lot of 90s artists when i when i started like i'm a big i'm a big hip-hop head okay and so like, who, who are some of your so if you're thinking 90s artists who are some of your top 90s artists? Talk, even um i can't i can't even think right now but mob deep you know like okay. really the old heads Nas. all right like all, so, all of those guys. Okay. So inspirations from all eras, a true hip hop yeah. head. You've been doing this for a while. What's your process like, man? You know, when you're, when you're sitting down and writing uh, some lyrics, what, how do you go about that? I just really, I just really like tap into it. Kind of, it's kind of a different like state of mind when I'm writing music. It's like, I'm not, I'm not like fully like here. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I just kind of get lost in it and do what I write. And then okay. once I, when I write a song, it's not like, oh, I'm writing, I'm writing this and this is going to be a song. I like, I write about experience, I, experiences I have and like thoughts going through my head and shit I've been through and shit I'm going through like in that moment. I'll even like, I'll even be out at a fucking party and I have some feelings. I'm going to, I'm going to write some shit in my, uh -huh. like, in my notes on my phone. And then like when I, when my producers hit me with a beat, that's when I tap in, I like I write music. Honestly, after that, I'll come back to that song like five or six times and like change shit and switch words out and okay, you know, switch the flows and all that. Just I take it. I take like actual like what I'm feeling and then and then I create the song from there and make. But okay. I still gotta make sure you know that shit's gonna hit, make it catch. Yeah. So so do you when you're writing? Are you like writing to rhyme? Are you thinking of the flow and cadence? Or are you just trying to talk about when you write? 
are you writing about what you want to write about or are you actually writing out the lyrics to potential songs i just i just write i just write my feelings and then it just kind of goes from there you know i turn it into a song make it rhyme okay. make everything everything flow with each other relate and it just i've been doing this for a while like i'm i'm not gonna lie i'm i'm a pretty good writer okay. i just I, I got a lot of tips for people out there too that are upcoming trying to. Okay. You know what? I, I'm glad you said that, man, because I, I wrote some stuff and I want I want some tips. I'm, I'm yeah, curious. Well, I, I'm trying to write a little uh, an intro uh, for Josh at night, and so I, I have it here with me. I, I was uh, writing with a friend because I feel like it's important to be able to collaborate. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a beat. But I'm gonna go acapella. You let me yeah. know. You let me know how it is. All right. So this is the Josh at night rap. My name is Josh, and this is the Josh at night show. I'm a 90s baby with a 90s flow. Let me be clear. This is my show. And in my house, what I say goes. So buckle up. You're in for a ride. Stay tuned until next time. That's my, that's my Josh at Night jingle, man. What do you think? That's a pretty dope jingle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what am I missing, man? Because I, like, I feel like it's... Uh, it's a work in progress. Let me say that. I'm not a professional rapper. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I, this, is a, this is a hobbyist. I want to be able to use this in the intro to these episodes or maybe the yeah. outro. I feel like it, it needs a little work. Specifically, I feel like I'm, I'm a little redundant with the let me be clear. This is my show. But I felt it was important to reiterate that I'm doing this similarly to how you're doing your music uh, because you enjoy doing it. I enjoy yeah, having conversations yeah, with people yeah. like you. But so if you're talking about tips, how can I improve my my rapping abilities my writing abilities okay so it's, it's definitely gonna be to a beat yeah it'll be it'll be to a beat we'll find something on okay. on the soundcloud or one of the free beat websites yeah yeah let me hear it again all right all right here you go my name is josh this is the josh at night show i'm a 90s baby with a 90s flow let me be clear this is my show and in my house what i say goes so buckle up you're in for a ride. Stay tuned until next time. What's what's I mean, it missing? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty solid, but I'd say, I'd like, say, the like, cadence? You know how, yeah, that, definitely cadence and definitely some of those like you. All right, so I like to take like you know like the end end of each bar rhymes with the next. Uh huh. Take take like something that rhymes with the end of end of the first bar and put it in get a word that rhymes with it and put it in the beginning of the next i don't know how to explain it like josh oh at, so the next line so like, my name is josh this is the josh at night show and then at the beginning of i am a 90s baby put something that rhymes with josh, josh at night show yeah or even show something that rhymes with show throw it in the show in the beginning or like so what, would, what, what could a word be i know this this is like a live brainstorm so my name is josh this is the josh at night show something like walking on a tightrope Oh, uh, walking on the tightrope with my '90s flow. Yeah, something, something like that, and it just, it just helps it okay. flow. It just helps it flow. You know what I mean? All right, so let me, let me use that. My name is Josh. This is the Josh at Night Show. Walking on a tightrope with my '90s flow. Let me be clear. This is my show, and in my house, <laughs> what I say goes. All right, I like that, man. So buckle up. You're in for a ride. Stay tuned until next time. All right, I like that. I'm, I'm on a tightrope with my '90s flow. Okay, I'm 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 gonna make that edit. Oh yeah, make that edit. Even uh, if you incorporated like some like some football references in there. Oh yeah, I need to oh, talk okay. about me being in the league. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I, I was I thought about maybe I should talk about like where I'm from and stuff. Exactly. I had this one line that I erase. I say I'm born in the H, stopped in Colorado, spent seven years in the league. Now I call Brooklyn home. See that's, like, that's oh, pretty I, good. That's fire! I fuck with that. You like that? That's fire. Okay. My, shit. my boy is actually smiling at that. He likes that. <laughs> All right, let me. I'm, I'm. I'm gonna put that line back in. Yeah, you know, if it's gonna be your intro, take some take some time with it, and and it'll, it'll be dope. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna put that in. We're gonna edit that to music, but in the meantime, what are five tips? What what are the like the five things that good raps should have? I know we mentioned co um, cadence, we mentioned flow, you mentioned yeah. rhyme scheme. If someone that's just starting, like myself, is trying to get into rap, like what do they need to be successful? I'd say don't. First off, don't give a like. Don't care about what anybody tells you, obviously. Uh -huh. But but I'd say lyrics. 
that's a huge mm. that's a huge like over uh, overturn like overlooked overlooked part of like what a lot of artists do they'll just like i'm not i'm not like shitting on any like soundcloud rappers or anything like that but a lot of people just don't really care about the lyrics and like that's yeah like obviously the way the way it sounds is the biggest part is the biggest part of music especially today but like it has to, your lyrics have to have meaning and like can't be some like cheesy ass shit you know what i mean for sure yeah no i think um people get hyped over the beats nowadays yeah. it's like who can have the dopest beat but i think at the end of the day that's, that's the producer making the song the producer makes the song not the rapper or the person, or the lyricist, yeah, someone who's yeah. writing the lyrics. Um, so at that point, uh, what's the point? Why are you getting into rap if you're leaning on the beat to make, you know, a track? Uh, okay, so the lyrics, that's the biggest thing. Lyrics, what do you have to say? Uh, you know, I think something that you really, you do really well in your music, for, to my amateur ears, is that you write about things that people can relate to. Yeah. And I think when you're telling stories specifically in any medium of art or content, that's what that's what sells. Um, and that's what people connect to. And that's what makes people successful. Um, yeah, man, I appreciate your time, dude. I don't want to hold you up. I, I, I really appreciate your time. Everyone, this has been a conversation on Josh at Night with Chris Rap. Uh, Chris, um, Chris Rap, man, I'm fucking up. Sap, Chris bro. Sap. You know, I'm in the rhyming mode now. Where can we find you, Chris? <laughs> you can find me anywhere. Instagram at Chris Sap. That's C-R-I-S-S-A-P underscore. You can find me on TikTok. Same thing. And I said Instagram. Spotify, YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Music, iTunes, all that. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate your time. I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to get back in the lab and get these, these lyrics yeah. tight. And then uh, maybe I'll put in a little addendum to the episode. But everyone, this has been Josh at Night. Uh, actually, the fourth episode of Josh at Night, not the third episode. I, I messed that up earlier. So the fourth episode of Josh at Night. Uh, Chris Sapp, artist. Thank you so much for joining the show. Everyone, he dropped his handles. Chris Sapp underscore on all platforms. Uh, that's Chris with C-R-I-S, Sapp, S-A-P, underscore on all platforms. Everyone, thanks for watching. Chris, thank you so much. Thanks for having Until me. Until next time, man. All right, bro. Have a good one. You too. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to show us some love by giving us a thumbs up, leaving a comment, or even subscribing. New episodes of Josh at Night are dropping every Saturday at noon.